everyone. This is Adrian from Audio Excellence. That's Philip and Jay. Uh, Audio Excellence Canada, I should say. There's a bunch of Audio Excellences all over the world. Um, well, there's really only one, Adrian. Come on. Only one in the world. <laughs> the one and only. <laughs> um, a couple of weeks ago, we, we did a, a part one of uh, Synthesis Audio um, tube amplifier line from Italy and uh, devolved into a completely different thing. So we decided we'll do a part two. Uh, part of the reason that the part one didn't work out was because um, Philip thought we hadn't put enough time on the amplifier, and he's right, so we decided to break it in more. And uh, so this is our follow-up. Uh, so let me just give you the um, uh, background details. Synthesis Audio is an Italian company. They've been around for a number of years, actually quite a few years now. Um, uh, this particular one that we're reviewing is uh, it's called the Roma 96 DC. Um, 25 watts per channel, Class A, integrated amp with a DAC, uses EL34s, and uh, comes with a variety of different finishes. Um, I think we'll put a link in the description box so you can see the manufacturer's website and all the different finishes. In Canada, I think we're only going to get about four. I um, can't remember which one Richard uh, has to remind me again. Anyway, um, why don't we start with one of you guys? Who wants to start? Jay, go ahead. Oh, boy. Um... So this amplifier is what four thousand dollars? Four thousand dollars. Yes, Canadian. It's okay. the lowest priced one in the range. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I like the sound. Um, I did some listening yesterday. Um, so I, originally you didn't. Well, originally I didn't like both, but I still I still don't like it. Um, but I like the sound. Uh, you don't like it, but you like the. I sound. don't like the fact that it's four thousand dollars. Okay. Um, because to me, uh, it looks nice. It's made in Italy, I believe, and uh, to me, it had the two characteristics that I personally liked when I was listening to it with the Nova once yesterday, which I thought um, was actually actually it, it, the mid range characteristic of, had that tube like characteristic. It had that sparkly high. But it had a lot, a little bit of a modern touch to it. Um, it didn't sound like the vintage tubes or the tube amplifiers that I like, you know, rave about and love so much. Um, you like slow, boring. Music. That's what. That's what. That's what Philip introduced me to. You know, like slow, characteristic. boring. Well, not not slow and boring, but you know. I so introduced like, you to good stuff, not like the stuff that you know. Slow and you're boring, like you. The good stuff. I'm talking about the, 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 the organic stuff. Like, no, no, like no, Macintosh MC60s or even yeah, MC30s. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the romantic, the beautiful, the, the, you know, the smooth. But, okay, anyways. Um, but uh, Tube Cho, you know, I, th I think that there are, there are many tube amplifiers and it's a competitive field, um, especially competing with, like, the old and the new. And the Italian one here, um, it looks nice. And if I was looking for looks, and sound at the same time with a slight of modern touch to the tube sound. So that's not like, you know, as people would say, you know, cloudy or, or uh, veiled or uh, veiled. Veiled. My goodness. He's Korean. He's, you it's, know. It's morning. Come on. How did you pass that test? Exactly. I passed it with flaming scores. Flaming Anyways. scores. Everybody. Um, no, Jay, don't, 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 don't disclose my personal Jay stuff. Jay is. Well, no longer not, illegal. That's right. He, he he had to sit for his um, TOEFL test. TOEFL? Isn't it TOEFL? What no. do they call it? English as a second language? What do they call it? Yeah. Test of English as a second language. That's English right. That's what it's ESL. called. ESL. Yeah, TOEFL. The funny thing is English is my first language. And, and yeah, well, nobody would know. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's vile. Yeah. So he comes the next day after he writes the test and he says, I aced it. This is a review of and the, the crazy, amplifier. And the crazy so thing I, is, um, no, no, so, the, wait, wait, so the crazy thing is, the fact that he was all excited that he actually passed the test tells you how lacking in confidence he was. He had to actually study for the test. But you understand that this, this guy here, yeah. you know, is an A-level student. Yeah. He was a tea baby. That's right. So <laughs> Boy, I don't know why you would have really had any doubt whatsoever, but you did have a little bit. What was that? You had a little bit of doubt going into the test. No, I, I had I had zero. 
Where are you getting this from? I had zero down. You, you said you had to study for the English test. And when I, I said, asked you how you did. Well, look, the, the first thing that when it comes to exams is it doesn't matter who's taking it, how easy it is. You have to go through the exam material and see what the exam is. Oh, you had someone entails. take it for you? No. <laughs> what? What are you getting? Okay, this, is, this has nothing to do with this video. Come on. It has we're going to do with the English usage, though. Okay, right. okay sorry. But, but again, really. I like the sound, but if you it was like, like two it. grand, I would be like all over this S. But Na name, a, name a competitive product. Wasn't made, an made, No, no, no. Made, made in... Made in Italy, in, no. Yeah. No. So how much are the Unisons? I don't know. And how many of them are made in Italy still? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Name. Mm. Made in Italy, no. That's what I'm saying. But does it have to be made in Italy? For me, no. But if you want that, then yeah. Four grand is like a steel. Made in Italy. You know, tube amplifier, where you're gonna find it for four grand. Okay. But yeah, that's that's about it. I mean, it has that tube characteristic, you know, high frequency, sparkly and all that, the bass, you know, a little bit a little bit woolly compared to like solid states, but still has that modern touch to it, really good bass. Um I had honestly in terms of sound I had nothing to complain about. And I would pick, honestly speaking, the synthesis over any other solid state amplifier um for, for myself with the Nova ones because it matches the perfect price range. And, you know, if that's what I can afford, that's what I would go with. Okay. Right. Philip, what do you think? So, of course, I hated it when I first heard it, um, which tells you something also, not so much about me because I do like a lot of things, but I just, you know, I didn't like this so much. Mm. And I complained about it. And this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to review it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then, of course, we played the heck out of it for a few days, and lo and behold, it changed. So all the things I disliked about it at first, because it was brand new out of the box, and um, they disappeared. Um, and I heard mostly what Jay heard. Um, yeah, it, you know, that bottom, that bottom end is kind of tubey, and the mid-range is definitely tubey, and uh, the top end, there was a glassiness and glare on it originally, and after the break-in period, it disappeared. And that's typically what you should hear. So those of you out there who think it's all snake oil, it isn't. Just listen to the thing. Uh, run it for 100 hours. It's not you getting used to it. You could be out of the room, and after 100 hours, it changes. So when we listen to things, things it changes. So we want to make sure that it's stabilized before we actually you know, start uh, doing some intensive uh, sessions with it. And so I listened for quite a bit before it changed over. And then after it changed over, within the first five minutes, uh, I was fine with it. it Did you find that it took quite a while to warm up? It takes, it takes definitely over an hour to warm up. Yeah. Um, when we had it off overnight the next day, it took a while. And it has that kind of hardness right at the beginning. It was yeah. not very pleasant. Yeah. But after it warms up, and it gets hot. Mm. So it's one of my you know, uh, caveats about the amplifier is that um, because of the small chassis and the nature of the circuit, because it's Class A, it's mm -hmm. outputting a lot of heat. Oh, yeah. And um, I found that the phono stage was quite competent, not nothing great, but definitely very usable. It does not get in the way, and the DAC is similar. It's not, it's not anything great, but at least it's on the unit. You can use it. I would highly advise if you buy something like this. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's this unit itself, but certainly anything like this. The fact that it would have, you know, uh, phono stage means that. It's, it's workable, and then the fact that it would have a DAC is also a workable type solution, but nothing long term. You want to have something better. It is capable of much more than what is built into the unit. So, like I, like Jay said, the the mid range is quite beautiful, and it matched perfectly with the Olympica Novo ones. Um, there's nothing to complain about. You could live with this amp for a long time. And the highs have that kind of tube characteristic, class A characteristic. It's a little bit rolled off. It does have some shimmer to it. And um, it images and sound stages quite well. It's, 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 it's uh, generous. That modern touch. Yeah, that modern touch. And the bottom end, it's a little bit tighter than what I would have expected because it's class A. But um, in that respect, right at the beginning especially, it sounded a bit transistory. Um, which was one of the reasons why I had a negative response to it. But it, it mostly disappeared, but it still has a little bit of that. So I'm going to comment on what Jay said about the price. The price is $4,000 retail. 
And if you look at it, we actually have an entire clientele that would refuse to buy something if it wasn't made in some place that has a good reputation. So Italy has a good reputation. It would have been made by essentially, you know, a, a craftsman or an artisan or something like that. Yeah. Um, and that's there's a value in that. I agree. I'm just a cheap bastard. Well, I'm I am too, and so, but but again, this is the lowest price one, and it's sort of you know in that affordable yeah. range. No, let, let me let me give you my background because I'm, I'm not I'm not arguing with you that you know made in Italy. I would love that you know an artisan or or whatnot you know uh, built this amplifier, but. You know, for 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 me, right? Uh, if it was like two thousand dollars cheaper because you know Philip made it, I would. <laughs> would you buy something that Philip made? No, <laughs> no on second thought, I, I would go with it. <laughs> I, I only had five spare parts left over, you know, so no no big deal. Yeah, but no, nah, I, I love you. But you like 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 Sonus Faber speakers. Oh yeah, everything now yeah. is made in the same. Um, factory slash plant slash whatever you want to call it and this is what people are asking for and so they pay the premium to buy them i mean a, a pair of sonettos is twenty five hundred dollars mm -hmm. canadian uh without the stands you know but there's two sides to this you know that right there's yeah. there's there's people like you yeah and adrian yeah. I, I i assume um who, who's like you know oh wilson audio made in the u.s you know great you know right and then there's other side, like me, who's like, oh, I hope they made stuff in China. I don't care if it's made in China or hey, anywhere I, in the world. I wish it was cheaper. So <laughs> just to give you guys an idea about what I buy around here, yeah. and, and certainly I don't pay, you know, what, like what the product is actually priced at because I, I buy used or demos yeah. or whatever, those kinds of things. And I get deals because I'm in the industry. Yeah. But the last two pieces I bought, yeah. one, Macintosh C2200. And Kiki Studio. And yeah, the other one is Kinky Studio. I bought amps from them, and that's made in China. Well, it probably says we are M7 B7 the the monoblocks the B7. Yeah, the B7. I'm getting that in too. It, it's a fabulous amp, but it's it's distinctly declares itself to be made in China. Yeah. And not we're not talking Taiwan. Yeah, we're talking about mainland China. Yeah, and it's it's as, it's built as well as anything I've ever seen. It's like Junction. They've been around like well, before exactly. I was born. So I don't have a problem with it. It's just about build quality. Now, with the synthesis, I know and when you look at it, when you pick it up, you know it is built really oh, yeah. well. Oh, yeah. And it is worth the money that they charge for it. Oh, yeah. Or they're asking anyways. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it, it has value, obviously, because Adrian is also on board with at least bring it into the store to try out and listen to it. Yeah, so so l l let me give my two cents. So sonically, um, uh, I really like this amplifier. I, I have a reservation, but I'll get to it in a second. I I really love what I hear. Uh, uh, when you guys came in this morning, when Jay and, and uh, Jerry came in this morning, it was blasting in the front room because I had been listening to it uh, since about four o'clock this morning. And when it first when 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 it was first turned on, I didn't like it at all. Um, <laughs> it, it it was it was cold. And then I went to do some paperwork. Came back about an hour later. And it had completely transformed. It was so good. And and I started listening for a couple more hours. Really, really good. All the things that I, I, I like about um, um, music in terms of uh, reproduction, it essentially gave it to me. And I tried um, using um, the Sonetto ones mm. that we just got in and also with the LRS, the Magnapan, just out of curiosity to see whether it would drive it. It drove it well. And... Um, uh, I was playing my playlist, and which includes crazy stuff like Muse and 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 dance music and and uh, Led Zeppelin, and it was cranked pretty high. In fact, I I had set the uh, test tone, one kilohertz at ninety five, wow. <laughs> ninety five dB. You're like concert it was, levels. It was cranking. Yeah, <laughs> it Jesus. was cranking, and it handled it for the most part. It was fine, um, and when it when it did uh, uh, reach its power peak levels, um, it clipped very nicely and softly. It didn't uh, uh, drive me out of the room. It was really nice. I was very impressed. Um, the, the, um, the only reservation I have is that, uh, as you guys know, I've been thinking for a long time about bringing a tube line in. And um, it's not been easy because it's one thing to 
like something, it's another to also combine that with a business proposition. So in other words, if I like something, I can certainly buy it. But um, for business, you have to think about, number one, reliability. Uh, serviceability. Is this something that we can easily service locally or will, is there a distributor that will look after the service? Um, uh, uh, lethality. Um, I've mentioned this in the <laughs> past. I, I, I've never mentioned the brand and I won't now. But um, we've had in the past a brand of well-known um, tube amplifiers from China where they literally caught fire. Caught fire. That's not just, okay, a tube amp blows up, you replace the tubes, you replace the resistors, and so on. This literally caught fire. And, you know, when, when that actually happens to you, you, you have a come-to-Jesus moment. You, you start <laughs> rethinking, you know, what are the priorities. And so uh, the last thing I want is to be responsible uh, for somebody else's, you know, hardship, like, you know, burning his house down. And so when I look at uh, electronics that we want to represent in the store, I have to think about those kinds of things. So um, the reservation is not that the, um, the, the, the um, um, amplifier will catch fire, but rather what else is out there that I'd like to try. So Richard, the distributor, says the model above this is a lot better. Mm. But he doesn't have a sample for us to try yet, so we're waiting for that. And if, in fact, it is that much better, then I think I'm all in. Um, uh, because we've tried some very well-known brands that many of you know, like Prima Luna and so on, and those are all pretty nice. But for whatever reason, they never grabbed me, the recent ones, um, with the same kind of passion that this one does. Um, so I'm, I'm actually quite curious to see what else might be out there that... Uh, we can combine um, from a business standpoint as well as um, from a personal standpoint. So that'd be interesting. That's why I asked you just now. What else would you would, would you look at? And um, the ones that I've come across recently, um, um, I haven't been all that excited about. So you know, it'd be interesting to see what else is out there that we can we can check out and report back. But the reason that we're doing this video is because I thought, well, since Richard is a friend and we are seriously thinking about this we'd report what we thought about uh, this product. And I like the fact that it's Class A. I've always been partial to really good, executed class, uh, well-executed Class A uh, designs, and this one is. You know, like the early Shadi, they were, yeah, they were right. very unreliable, you, you, but boy, when they worked, they were magical. But you do realize that, you know, above this price point, mm -hmm. uh, you're starting to com uh, compete with Luxman stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. So again, I'm 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 trying to get some samples of Luxman to try. Oh yeah. Um, uh, you see, the the thing is, Luxman two. Yeah. Yeah. So, so above this, I said above this price point. Well, it's also we're talking Macintosh about the upper two. Model. Exactly. So. Well, don't forget this one is an integrated, right? So and it's a it's a it's a tube integrated rather than a hybrid, whereas the Macintosh in this case would be a hybrid. But uh, I I I'm waiting for some samples of Luxman if if the rep can get us some. Um, uh, they'll be interesting to check out. In the past, Luxman had products that were made in China as well as in Japan. And uh, so I'm, I'm waiting to see what the rep can get us. And, and uh, the one Luxman, I can't remember the model, um, that I heard at a client's house, a gentleman who bought the uh, Yvettes. Oh, this is a great story. He comes right. in looking for a pair of Klipsch's that sell for about $4,000. He, he did buy them. And though. he bought them and he wasn't satisfied. And then next thing you know, he, he goes all the way up to the events. No, he bought Sabrina's, Sabrina's first. Sabrina's first. And then within a week, he loved it so much, he just bought said, give the me events. the events. I so, had to do the installation, trust that, me. You know, that might have been, that was not that, a fun that might have been the biggest upsell we've seen from so 4000 to he, he, he had, he had um, the Class A smaller uh, integrated uh, transistor, though. So he had 25 watts. And then eventually what he did do, he didn't buy another amp from us. He he He... He, yeah, he came in to look Luxman. at some stuff, but yeah. he ended up buying a 50 water Luxman yeah. Class A, yeah. and it was enough to drive the events. Oh yeah, in this room they sounded fabulous. Yeah. Um, so I am intrigued by Luxman, um, but again, part of the decision making in the store is not only the sound but also the business proposition. In other words, it also has to include 
value. And, and the way I define value may be very different than everybody else, but value is not the money. So something could be $10,000 and could be expensive. In other words, not worth it. But something could be $10,000 and incredibly cheap relative to what it actually does. And, and so for me, the concept of value is very, very high. It has to be very high value. So I'd like to be able to get some Luxman among others to check out and, and, and see. I'm not against um, made in Asia products. Uh, what I'm against is shoddy quality and, and inconsistencies. So in other words, this product you get may be great and then the next shipment comes in and it's terrible and that happens or has happened quite a bit in my past and I, I yeah, we've had that problem with uh, American products too. yeah and I wouldn't stand for that because it means that the company is doesn't know what they're doing or they have shoddy workmanship or QC so right. and who wants to work with that yeah <laughs> well the thing is it's, it's one thing to buy one for yourself right and, and you happen to like it that's another uh, but it's another when you are recommending it and selling it, and then it, you, ter- you find you find out that the next shipment is substantially different. Might be worse, might be better, but it's different, which means that there's no consistency. And when there's no consistency, you don't know what you're getting. And, and well, for good. me, especially if I'm buying, let's say you know, let's, let's bring bring the price down here because I'm 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 young. So if I'm I'm buying like something like a five hundred dollar amp for my desktop setup, I don't care where it's from. But if I'm investing in like you know. Five thousand, you know, eight thousand dollars on an amplifier for my stereo setup. I care where it's from, so yeah. that's just where I see it. Yeah. So anyway, I think we're in general uh, agreed that this is actually very, very good. It's very viable. Yeah, it's very, very good. I, I, I like it a lot, and that's yeah, not easy for me to say, considering that uh, um, I've been very fortunate to have listened to a lot of different and very, very good amps. This is very good. And so it's not cheap, but it's very My good. final seal of approval is I'm already finagling in some sort of way to getting this amp at some point in the near future. Well, wait, wait, wait to see what the bigger <laughs> one sounds like. Well, I can't afford the bigger yeah, one. <laughs> well, it's, it's apparently, it's so this one's 4,000. Richard says the one above it is five. So it's not dramatically more. But if it's substantially better, then I think I'm they have a four and then a five thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the details are. Uh, it's more powerful. It's it's fifty different watts. tubes. It's fifty watts instead KK8. of twenty five. Something like that. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll wait, wait for Richard to bring it in. Anyway, Richard, if you're watching this video, get your ass off and get us a sample. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll we'll finish this video. We'll do it. We'll do the next video. So if you like this video, please subscribe. Turn on a notification. I can never pronounce it correctly. And notification. Give it a like. Give it a like. Share the video. Because the money that we make from this video, we match and we uh, donate to the Salvation oh, Army. Also, um, all you said. Uh, uh, read the uh, description box because we also include links to uh, other videos that we've done as well as interviews with some wonderful manufacturers and designers in our industry and it might be of interest to you. Anyway, it's Adrian, Philip, and Jay signing off from Audio Excellence in Canada. Take care. Bye-bye.